Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, Israel continues to arrest Palestinians as far-right leader joins the anti-Netanyahu coalition. Qatar change charges labor activist Malcolm Bidali with spreading disinformation. Philippines police kill community and communist activists in latest viral raids. And in our video section, we take a look at the protests in Brazil against the government's mishandling of the pandemic. In our first story, Israeli forces arrested at least 45 Palestinians in the occupied West Bank over the weekend. The Palestinian Prisoner Society stated that the arrest took place in Jenin, Ramallah and also in East Jerusalem among other places. The latest round of detentions is part of the ongoing mass arrest campaign after the Palestinian uprising this month. Among those detained are at least 13 journalists. The Israeli police announced on May 27 that it would continue the so-called Operation Law and Order for another week. Since May 10th, at least 1,938 Palestinians have been arrested and 175 indictments have been filed. Rights groups have also pointed to the increasing arrests of children over the past two weeks. According to one activist, an estimated 150 children have been arrested so far. They often spend hours in interrogation without a lawyer and are kept in detention for prolonged periods of time. Israeli authorities have also withdrawn the health insurance of former prisoners and their families. Rights groups have denounced his action as a form of collective punishment to deter protests. Israeli forces shot and killed 28-year-old Zakaria Amayel in the village of Beta on May 28. Hundreds of Palestinians had gathered to protest the expansion of illegal Israeli settlements. Another protest, protester was shot three times during an anti-settlement agitation in Ramallah on May 29th. Israeli forces also assaulted and fired tear gas at protesters in Sheikh Jarrah. Meanwhile, far-right Israeli politician Naftali Bennett has announced a potential coalition with opposition party Yesh Atid. If both sides are able to reach an agreement, it will end Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's 12-year rule. As per reports, Bennett and Yesh Atid leader Yair Lapid will split the prime ministerial term. Bennett's Yamina party has backed the annexation of parts of the occupied West Bank. He has supported the airstrikes in Gaza and defended the targeting of civilian buildings, hospitals and schools. In our next story, the Qatari government announced charges against Kenyan labor activist Malcolm Bidali on May 30th. He has been charged with accepting money from foreign countries to spread disinformation. 28-year-old Bidali was detained without charges on May 5th and was held at an undisclosed location. He worked as a security guard and frequently wrote on the web portal Migrant Rights. His writing focused on the condition of workers who were involved in preparations for the 2022 Football World Cup. He spoke about long working hours and other issues including low wages and cramped accommodation. Bidali's mother, Maggie Turner, has stated that he has not received legal aid while in detention. As reported by Middle East Thai, he was only allowed to meet representatives from the Kenyan embassy on May 30th. The Qatari government and the National Human Rights Committee have denied these claims. The condition of migrant workers in Qatar was also the subject of a report by The Guardian published in February. Over 6,500 South Asian migrant workers have died in the country since 2010. 37 deaths have been of workers directly linked to the construction of World Cup stadiums. The deaths of migrant workers are often categorized as natural without any forensic investigation. Other causes of death listed in official data include blunt injuries sustained after falling from heights, asphyxia due to hanging and undetermined causes. We now go to the Philippines where police arrested Fisher Folk community leader Elvin Mangampo on May 30th. Riots group Karapatan stated that he was arrested during an arms raid in the Albe province. The local Fisher Folk Union has denounced the arrest as being part of fabricated charges and planted evidence. Mangampo was, uh, has been at the forefront of COVID-19 relief efforts for fishing communities in Albe. This included a demand for production assistance for small fishers. Karapatan stated that he had been red tagged by local authorities for his involvement in these campaigns. Mangampo's arrest followed just days after three people were killed in twin raids by the Philippines National Police. Among them were two communists associated with the National Democratic Front of the Philippines. 78-year-old Renaldo Bocala and his associate Billy Epago were killed in the Iloilo province on May 28. Police had come to arrest Bokala for allegedly holding senior posts in the Communist Party of the Philippines. The eight-year-old former priest, Rusty Gotan, was killed by unidentified assailants in his home in Cebu province. Bokala and Tan had worked as consultants in the peace talks between the Communist Party and the government. However, President Rodrigo Duterte withdrew from the talks in 2017 and declared the CPP a terrorist organization. Since then, community leaders, indigenous groups and activists have been tagged, red-tagged as suspected communists. Joint raids by the police and armed forces are often conducted under the pretext of handing out warrants for possession of firearms. And in our final story, we go to Brazil, which witnessed massive countrywide protests on May 29th. Tens of thousands of people protested against the government's failure to address the COVID-19 crisis. Nearly 462,000 people have died in the country so far, and cases are only continuing to rise. Meanwhile, President Jair Bolsonaro is facing a Senate inquiry over his government's pandemic response. Bolsonaro repeatedly underplayed the crisis, refused to enforce lockdowns, and reportedly also delayed the vaccination process. Here's a video feature on Saturday's protests.
aqui hoje para reforçar o grito de milhares de pessoas no Brasil inteiro de que não dá mais. Não dá mais para a gente aguentar um genocida matando o povo brasileiro pelo vírus ou pela fome. Nós não vamos esperar passivamente até 2022. Nós não vamos deixar o Brasil sangrando até 2022. Nós vamos dizer que a gente quer o impeachment do Bolsonaro já. Esse é o já para todo mundo, em defesa do SUS, pelo auxílio emergencial, dois seiscentos reais pelo menos, até o final da pandemia, para os 60 milhões de brasileiros e brasileiras que estão passando fome e necessidade, e fora Bolsonaro, que tem que se caracterizar como um governo antipopular, antidemocrático, antinacional e genocida. Já são mais de 450 mortes. São mais de 450 mil mortes nesse país. E a responsabilidade número um é a do governo Bolsonaro. Por isso estamos aqui. O MST, Movimento Sindical, outras organizações da classe trabalhadora, de vários municípios aqui da região. Vacina já para todo mundo quando? Já! Vacina já para todo mundo quando? Já! Auxílio emergencial quando? Já! Auxílio emergencial quando? Já! Fora Bolsonaro quando? Já! Fora Bolsonaro quando? Já! Viva o povo brasileiro! Viva o povo brasileiro! Viva a luta da classe trabalhadora! That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.